So today we are going to talk about dot blots and how they can be useful for examining sequences to tell us something about their um, biological relationship. And so if we just take a very simple kind of toy example here of an mRNA sequence I've written out, and what happens, how can we use a dot blot to compare this mRNA sequence to itself? Let's see, when we compare the mRNA sequence to itself, it should reveal pretty obviously that these are the same two sequences. So a dot plot is just a graph where on each axis is the sequence that you're going to compare. And in this case, it is the same two, um, it is the same two uh, mRNA sequences that I've written on either side. And then any place, uh, dot plot basically uses, um, um, utilizes programming to be able to compare where those two things are the same. And if you have the same base, then it puts a dot at that position. So in this case, since these two sequences are exactly the same, then you get a perfect match of for the dot plot, which is a perfect diagonal. And um, so if we take in here, uh, on the right side now, so let me just highlight that for you. Um, so uh, we have this image, then um, this is basically just a kind of extrapolated version of what we're seeing on the left, where we have, we can see that it's the same two gene names, so NM, that's the accession number, or basically a unique identifier in NCBI for this um, mRNA. We know it's mRNA because it's an M accession number. And um, since now these sequences are so long, when the dots are so close to each other, they basically look zoomed out like a diagonal line. Another clue that we can see that these are the same two sequences as they have the same lengths. But what happens, so now we can get a feeling so that we know, okay, if two things are exactly the same, we expect to see a diagonal line. Well, what happens when we compare a um, eukaryotic mRNA sequence to the genomic DNA sequence for that? Um, same sequence. And um, this can tell us some patterns about how these sequences relate to each other. And so this was um, utilizing that NCBI BLAST program, and I took the same mRNA that we had before, so NM, that's for the insulin receptor. And then this time, instead of being the same sequence, on the y-axis is the gene sequence that codes for that mRNA. And so first off, we can see a few kind of surprising things. Um, one is that no diagonal, no straight diagonal line across the whole thing, no diagonal for the whole thing for entire sequence. So they don't match completely. Another thing that we can notice is that on the y-axis here, there's 8,416 nucleotides, where on the x-axis it's only 469. So that already tells us that we're looking at different length sequences. And so um, if we looked closer, this kind of visually quickly tells us that there's these breaks here. And these breaks mean that there was a region um, uh, completely in the gene sequence that was not present in the mRNA sequence, and then it started matching up perfectly again. So this tells us that there are um, segments within the mRNA sequence that match perfectly to the gene, but that the gene sequence has other parts that are not found in the mRNA. And these are what we call, so here are represented these uh, by the gaps that we see in the dot plot. And um, these are what we call introns. They are not present in the mature RNA and the parts that are, that will actually be expressed into a protein are called exons. So the dot plots are a very nice and quick visual way to say, do these sequences really match? And is there a pattern in um, large deletions that are not present?